Hi, everybody. This is Miss Sarah from the Upper Chichester Library in Upper Chichester, Pennsylvania. Welcome to another Books and Babies. The first book we're going to read today is called Bread, Bread, Bread. And it's about the many different kinds of bread that people all around the world eat. The photographs are by Ken Hyman, and we're reading this one with the permission of HarperCollins. People eat bread all over the world. There are many kinds, many shapes, many sizes. Skinny bread, fat bread, round flat bread, bread with a hole, that's a bagel. Crunchy bread, lunchy bread, and bread to soak up your egg. Pizza, pretzel, they are bread too. Do you like either of those? Bread on the table, bread on your head. This child's carrying a whole lot of bread in a tray on their head. Bread is good for you. It helps you grow. It makes you strong. It tastes pretty good too. Making bread, shaping bread, baking bread. Imagine how good that smells. One second, there we go. Toasting bread over here and cooking bread over the fire. That's a kind of bread called a tortilla. Well, this book has hard to turn pages. Here we go. Fill up the basket off to the market. They're going to sell the bread they made. Here we go. Bread for sale. He's selling his off of a cart. There's some in the window of a store. And here's some in a basket. Breaking bread together. We're sharing a meal that has bread as part of it. Have a bite. Delicious. And if you take this book out of the library, the back will tell you what country each of those pictures comes from and what kind of bread they're eating. So take a look for that one, bread, bread, bread. All right, that was our first story of the night. Do you know Thomas the Train? Thomas the Tank Engine? This is a whole book full of stories about Thomas and friends called Railway Rhymes. And we're reading this with permission of Penguin Random House. And we're just gonna do a couple tonight and we'll come back to some others later. So the first two pages we're gonna to read tonight, we're gonna to meet Thomas the Tank Engine and this man who's in charge of the railroad, Sir Topham Hatt. So here's a poem about, about Thomas. Thomas is a tank engine who's small and short and blue. He sometimes causes mischief, but his heart is good and true. Engines don't have hearts, you say, and that is very smart. But Thomas's good nature proves he doesn't need a heart. For those with hearts are good and kind. They help when times are tough. They stick by friends and those in need and cannot give enough. They listen when they're spoken to and try to do their best. They know there's time to work real hard and time to play and rest. So Thomas doesn't have a heart, but he is all of these. Good, hardworking, smart and kind, 
he always aims to please. And on his branch line, back and forth, he's loyal to the end. And with his boiler, he is still a really useful friend. So that's Thomas the Tank Engine. And he pulls train cars up and down his branch line. Now, Sir Topham Hatt, let's learn about him. Who's the one who must be sure that service is first rate? Who cheers the trains when they're on time and chides them when they're late? Who keeps the branch line safe and sound and makes sure mail gets through? Who is the one who runs the rails? Sir Topham Hatt, that's who. Next time we'll read some poems about some of Thomas's other friends. Now, a couple weeks ago, we read a story about honeybees and I thought you might enjoy another one. This one is called The Honeybee. It's written by Kirsten Hall and illustrated by Isabel Arsenault. And we're reading this one with the permission of Simon and Schuster. So this one is also about honeybees making honey and how they do it. It's got beautiful pictures. A field, a tree, climate and sea. For miles all around you, grow wild and free flowers. But then, shh, what's that? Do you hear it? You're near it. It's closer. It's coming. It's buzzing. It's humming. What could it be? All these flowers. <gasps> A bee, isn't he cute? Cute bee. Four tiny wings, they buzz and they sing. They're clapping and flapping. The busy bees lapping. Lap, 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 he flies around. Tap, 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 searching, perching. This is the flower the bee has chosen. This is the flower the pollen grows in. This is the flower, its color so bright. Its sweet blooming scent calls the bee from its flight. Such a long trip, it's time for a sip. Sugary, watery, nectar. That's a kind of juice that flowers make, that bees love to drink. There now, it drills now. The bee sips and spills now. There now, it swills now. It sits oh so still now. There now, it fills now. It's back to the hill now. More pollen, more nectar. It's mealtime, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz, a crowd, swarming and teeming and loud, flapping, flying, landing, prying, all of this nectar, it's ours, it's ours. They work on the flowers for hours and hours until little bees with heavy sacks, lifting, shifting, turning back. Zoom, they race. Zoom, they chase. Zoom, they zoom and pick up the pace. And then they see it up ahead. Our hive, our hive, our hiding place. Watch them arrive. Watch how their hive buzzes alive. Buzz. Where are the flowers you found today? Asks one of the bees of the hive. Dance for us foragers, show us the way. Did you know bees do little dances to tell other bees where to find good flowers? 
A dance begins. Waggle, wiggle. The dance is lovely. Tremble, jiggle. The dance goes straight now in a line. A figure eight is the final sign. Oh, now we know, we know where to go. Thanks for the secrets and thanks for the show. New foragers leave on a searching mission while house bees march forward with hungry ambition. Those house bees are gonna start making the honey out of the nectar. Chew, chew, that's what we do. We suck out the nectar, we suck it straight through. Chew, chew, we're changing its makeup. We're giving the nectar a chemical shakeup. Chew, chew, we make it like glue. Make it thick, make it stick. Make it slick, make it new. Chew, 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 chew. At last, we are finally through. And, but there's more to do at home. Like fill the honeycomb. These spots right here, you can see. They jam its cells with nectar plaster, then rev up their engines and beat their wings faster. Whoosh, they're strong despite their size. Swoosh, the nectar cools and dries. It's getting thicker now. Wings move quicker now. Fan fast, pump blast. We did it, we did it. It's honey at last. So they chewed it up and put it in the honeycomb. They dried it with their wings. And now to keep it safe, tiny honey cells are capped. Liquid gold, the honey, is sealed and trapped. And only when it's needed most will these vaults be tapped. So they'll leave it there till they get hungry. Outside, the hive comes shorter days cooler winds and softer rays, fewer eggs to birth and raise. With the queen less busy, the hives less buzzy, and bees amass all soft and fuzzy. Come now, rest, join our nest, huddle and cuddle, the winter's our test. And here we see it's winter, there's no leaves on the tree, but there's the nice warm beehive hanging from it. They'll make it through with the honey they stored. Pop, a bud on a flower. Drip, some mud. Creatures stir in the melting snow and inside the hive, the bees, they know. Hum, it's springtime. Hum, life anew. One little bee in a tree knows what to do. Watch it zoom. Looking for more flowers. A field, a tree, climate and sea. From a faraway hive flew this hardworking honey sweet. They're going to do it all over again and make more honey to store up for the next winter. Isn't that nice? All right, today we're going to read one last story. And this one is a bedtime story or a nap story. This one's called Good Night Little Grover. And it's illustrated by Norman Garbati. And we're reading this with permission of Penguin Random House. Time for bed, Grover. He's heading upstairs. Grover cannot go to sleep without his bedtime story. Or his drink of water. Do you get any of those things before you go to bed? Do they help you go to sleep? Or his nightlight.
Grover cannot go to sleep without his teddy monster and a bedtime hug. Good night, little Grover. The end. I hope you'll come back next week and watch a few more stories that we get to share together. Thank you for being here today. Have a great week.